you already know my name, so Shuddhi Dimli. I am from Anagram Architects. We set up our practice 20 years back, so we've been practicing in Delhi. We do a lot of hospitality work, resorts, hotels, pan India. We also do a lot of institutional work, so that's the kind of work that we do. Since we're at the Smart Exa conference these past days, can you tell us a bit more about what is smart design and architecture to you? Smart design is just making the building a little more efficient than it was previously. So I don't believe in saying it's smart architecture. I think it becomes smarter every time. So, you know, start building smart and then with more technology, more intentful design, it becomes smarter. So if I look at a building, you know, before, you know, the industrial re revolution, so to say, we were building smart in the sense that we were trying to optimize on the sunlight, you know, through the day, you know how. Uh, we were trying to make buildings that would optimize and build for the kind of climatic conditions that are there in that area. Over time now, with better technology, better materials, you know, things have evolved. And so every time we put them into practice, we just become more smarter. I don't know if I answered that question. You've mentioned that you're currently working on uh, academic institutions. Um, can you just elaborate more about what kind of architectural approach you take for these, this type of architecture? So traditionally, school buildings have been very similar in the past uh, 50 years or actually 75 years of our independence. The initial schools were very, very simple linear buildings, you know, with corridors and classrooms. But I find that more recently, because we are now open to very different kinds of buildings also, even school owners have started asking for more integrated forms, you know, not just linear classrooms because also education is not that linear anymore because the curriculum is such that requires, uh, you know, kids to be inside class, outside class, interacting with you know, across batches sometimes that really guides the architecture and the design also. So, you know, the courtyard around which the classrooms are functions not just on one plan, on, on one floor, but across three different floors. So there's staircases that connect different floors and students uh, within the courtyard, you know, come into the courtyard for a common class and then disperse into various different breakout areas. So, you know, I think school design has really changed now. Also, the kind of schools that are coming up have also changed. So another school that we're designing is a sports school where the open fields are the classrooms and the extracurriculars are the rooms inside because you know your art class or your geography or your history is the extra subject that you do. So that changes the way uh, you are organizing spaces within a school. You've mentioned about the architectural language of academic institutions in India. How you think Indian architecture is now and what you see it becoming? I think it's not just true of India but everywhere else the language or the contextual language is really blurring because we are all connected digitally and we see pictures and influences come from all over the world everywhere you know I used to first think that we are emulating the West but equally the West I think I see so many times they are influence, influenced by our ideas the way we organize our spaces I think it's all going to become a single you know uh, lot of a basket of different images I go to Greece and I see the architecture there and I come back and I visit so many places here that have been around for 10, 15 years. And if you, you know, if you say in the past 20 years, we've seen so many new spaces, buildings, architecture that's heavily influenced from, you know, places all over the world. That's one. So influences are very many. And number two, you know, earlier we had a panel on parametric design. These design tools are giving rise to uh, vocabularies that are very very universal so if you are using the same software and if you're also trained you know outside India my point is that uh, sad but true I think the language is getting is becoming common to all places in that as sensitive designers we try to find Indianness within it but an overall identity, I think as it is in India, there are so many identities because we are a mix of so many different cultures. With that, now when we start inheriting things from all over, it just becomes a richer, but also, you know, more sort of common bank of uh, architectural vocabulary. How did you find the SmartX conference? First of all, I was expecting to see a very, very focused, single uh, topic sort of uh, coverage across two days. But I'd say I'm glad to see that uh, there is a plethora of various issues that have been covered. The panel that we were a part of was also very immersive. 
because uh, everyone spoke about various different angles various different aspects of the parametric design that was the topic so i think it's uh, it's great i wish them a lot of luck also and look forward to you know it evolving as a space for discussing smart solutions and smart designs